go ahead and put my and pin myself here and you you can see me just fine mm -hmm. great okay so i uh, we did our red thread but i also begin circles by having everybody say their name so on the count of three just go ahead and you can do this muted i'm going to have everybody stay muted because i know people in the future will be watching this as well um on the count of three let's let's get serious about this we'll say our name one two three Chan. So there's something very powerful about that, and it's putting our resonance in the circle. It's putting ourselves in the circle because our entire life we have been informed by that name. And we, when we show up in a circle, we show up as ourselves, and our name is our label. For now, you can always change your name. So welcome to this SOAR talk. Um, I'm just wondering, if you know what SOAR means, raise your hand. Okay, she knows. <laughs> and what it means is sounding our authentic resonance. It means not hiding, not resisting, not running away from, or having fear about our authenticity and speaking from our heart without our ego monkey mind. So when we sound our authentic resonance, it's a very powerful thing. And the way that we get practice and support and confident in being a sore person, sounding our authentic resonance, is the reason I brought this gathering in today. It's circles. I call them sacred circles. So let me tell you a little bit about sore. Um, I actually have a YouTube channel because I've been making informational videos that describe the SOAR initiative for 10 years now. I have 26 videos, so take your pick du jour. They're all different and they've been coming forth at different times for the initiative. And now in March, 2021, I'm very clear that even though I thought for a while we were to start a big nonprofit and an organization and train people, my rule with SOAR is to plant a seed in the mind of awakening women that we don't have to do things the way we used to do. We don't have to do the pointy way, the patriarchal dominance, power on top, and we're down here and waiting for our turn to talk. No. I call that the prickly piece because even the pyramid style has points on it. The feminine template of SOAR is all about women being in circles, supportive, sacred circles, where they feel safe and grounded. And there's a reason they're there. They like the people. They have a resonance. They're kindred spirits. So they are drawn together magnetized to a circle or guess what there's some rules to that circle there's some boundaries there's some intentions that keep that circle safe and meeting the needs of the people that came initially to that circle so you're probably thinking right now well what circles am i in what is she talking about circles maybe Am I a leader of a circle? Or you know, I am a leader of a circle and I overlap and I'm in many other circles too. So as I speak today, it's for you. Again, I'm bringing this seed, this template for you to stop thinking of, is the speaker gonna let me talk? Or do I have to pay a lot of money? And I'm not getting that much because this person's sitting up at the talk, they're the talking head. Once you just start thinking circles, well, you're an equal. Everyone is an equal. And guess what? They take turns standing in the middle talking. We respect and take turns and we bring each other up as masters and facilitators and teachers. So we're constantly empowering and encouraging. 
Now it doesn't happen by accident. In fact, you've probably been in some women's groups where there might be some competition or talking around the corner, all sorts of different things. So there are some basic ways to create a circle and how circles work, how you can create them that we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so again, the uh, template for SOAR was, what if you, Mary, Margaret, Jan, what if we held our absolute anchor and fearlessly spoke our truth? Again, the source circles where you learn to speak your truth so that when you do go and talk at the town meeting leadership or you talk at your church doing an invocation, you feel safe because you've learned to hold the vibrational space, a sacred space that what you have to say is important and deserves other people's attention. So it's an inner and outer working, external world needing experience, an internal world, that sacred space of being heard in sacred circle. So you'll see that it circles upon circles that this surrounds the earth. It, but we work with one person at a time. And I'll tell you, I'm the perfect person to lead this initiative. I've made commercials. I've made source stories. I have always had to varying degrees. Um, I'll call it a panic disorder with public speaking. I can just totally get distracted or my voice croaks. It, and I actually was a professional singer. So you can imagine how I didn't know how or what was going to happen because I was at uh, the mercy of my nervous system. And so built in to soar in the circles as part of the training and support over many years, I'm happy to say that I developed a method called voice release so that women can release fear and speak into circles and get so much confidence they can go out and speak anywhere, anytime to anyone. That's the goal, to be leaders, to, to open up your heart and your gut. And when people hear your voice, they say, oh, that's a voice to be reckoned with, even if they don't agree with you. There's something about that authentic resonance blended in with sacred spirituality that people will listen and that's what we want we want to come out of being marginalized being invisible being taken uh, being taken in with respect be received who we are and what we have to say is our calling card to the world so that they know what we are about so that's soar uh, that is the template, and it gets it can get pretty complex with the whole idea, but we are going to um, we're going to stick with circles right now. So I am going to ask, um, ha have you had experience being in a circle? Go ahead and raise your hand. Now, was it generally positive or was it generally negative? Maybe both. You can do both. Yeah, you can actually do both because you may remember times where you felt hum humiliated, not really welcome, not welcome to, to give your two cents. And in a sense, that might have been a, a top down authoritarian dominance over rather than sharing with. So as part of this process today, as I'm speaking, it's for you to bring up some of your old experiences good and bad and to remember there might be resistances or hesitancies to showing up because you've been in groups that didn't have shared rules with integrity and sometimes circles and groups they're unconscious and they're unspoken and maybe other people know what the rules are and you don't especially if you're a newcomer there's so many subtle nuances so the SOAR groups do have what I call a golden standard of equality and listening. And we will see that in a minute. Okay. So what I've brought today is actually uh, 
overview video for those that are new. And then after that, we will go into specifically how to create the SOAR circles. Okay, so this is about SOAR Global Leadership Program. I made this in 2013, but it's still just as fresh today. A good idea stands the test of time. I welcome you to the SOAR initiative, sounding our authentic resonance. This is a program that will allow for inspired women with stellar leadership skills to come together and create a roster so that we can go out in groups around the world and teach sustainable living, empowerment and leadership and work through the healing arts and arts. So many of you are already doing this, and this is an initiative simply for us to come together, get some organization so we don't have to recreate the wheel. We'll come together and work to create a higher consciousness so that we can bring these initiatives easily in a non-competitive, collaborative way, repatterning all of Earth through these feminine initiatives through our own divinity. There is a magic and a sparkle occurring on earth now through the women. We are coming together to empower each other and help us remember and to charge forward in a team like clockwork. We are now gathering locally, globally, and circling the planet in a traditional feminine way, filling the fluid of the feminine once again, full of vibrancy, the receivership, the nurturing. There's a long list of women who are holding this beautiful energy of change. We will go out into the world in leadership teams, healer teams, and environmental sustainability from all walks of life. In these teams, we can rotate and decide where to go and which program to be part of, like a stable of horses ready to go out all meeting our own individual schedules and interests from a central point, going out to venues around the world. So we don't have to recreate workshops and events by ourselves anymore. There will be community centers waiting and looking for us to come and to bring our skills, our information, our love, and our music. Some of the steps we need to take Create themes, market, funding, developing the venues. We will be working very closely with the arts and when we meet with women around the world, we will be singing with them, doing artwork and processes to be close and to connect and play. To remember how to play together how to do ceremony, how to bring back from the past that which was rich through our ancestors, bringing forth the feminine energy in all that we do to help repattern the earth back to her senses. We will work with the model of the Solara Center of working with the person as body, soul, and mind using sound and ceremony 
in groups. We will be using oral tradition, plays, and ceremony, and working from our hearts with the women that we join. There is an awakening on the planet. People's brains are actually waking up, and we are realizing that we are not alone in the universe, that we do have galactic, angelic realms ready to assist us and help us as we awaken to the remembrance of the roles that we have played in previous lifetimes, promising to come back in these positions, joyfully rekindling these very deep, trustful relationships. We are forming new leadership liaisons to go out into the world powerfully as authority. We can join together and relearn what we already know. We will begin this call to leadership by meeting together in various forms this year. If it is up to us to take the world into our hands and to know that there is no guru, that each adult woman is now the Messiah with her voice joined with her sisters in harmonious, collaborative So um, the SOAR philosophy is shifting everything that must be the ha happy little ending here. Oh, <laughs> it went straight into the SOAR ambassador program. Now that I have a YouTube um, channel in 26, you could spend a lot of time just going through and finding what is interesting there. Okay, come on, come on. I've got to get my zoom back here. There we are, We're down here on the bottom. So uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. Did that bring up any feelings or questions or any, does that relate to any of your thoughts of how the future will be organized? <laughs> yes. Um, Margaret, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for me, it does. It does bring up. This is more what I'm finding. I'm being moved to, but it's it's being done in a very gradual way, um, such as with. Uh, I'll be urged to do something or read something, and and I have I'll have an experience in particular with something very, you know, and something in nature that'll be, um, to me, very personal and, and profound. And so it's now that I'm getting my ego out of the way, it seems like this idea of women's circles to support uh, the feminine and for them to be able to feel safe, a safe container for them to be their true spiritual selves. I think you nailed it um, to feel safe to be their spiritual selves, because if we are leading uh, mankind towards the new paradigm, that that's where the information is in the sacred etheric realm. So that's why I think they're so perfect, because they allow the inner ideation and intuition to come up and be honored. And when you see one thing, in my inner vision, and I see it, um, an eagle just went by as I'm speaking. 
that, 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 that we soar together. We actually, it's easier together. And one of the reasons I chose the soar metaphor is that when birds are flying in flock, uh, they take turns going up and being the front bird that takes all the headwind. And then she gets tired, she goes to the back. And it's a very efficient, effective, natural way. Ancient times, even uh, churches had a feminine model, not so much an altar, a focus on one person who you, you defer your own power to. Churches were a round table when women were there and they blessed the sacred, the earth and the land and thanked source as a circle of beings, a council of beings. So it, it is the new feminine way moving forward. Okay, so I said that we would talk specifically about circles. So let's do uh, another video now that really talks about circles. And then we'll do some individual work and take a look at perhaps your circles or my circles. And we'll go a little deeper, making it more personal. So we're going to do a screen share. Let me put myself back on a pin. Okay. We're going to do a screen share here. And this is a SOAR presentation. Just so you know, I've done a, maybe two or three every year for the last 10 years, and they've been in very various sizes and um, individuals coming and in. all was just phenomenally uh, wonderful and deep and well received, I must say. Okay, so this was an August 12th Facebook live event where I presented for many years now. Yeah, circles. And funny, but I don't think we need to buy a big center in France anymore. I think we're doing this all in the etheric over the internet and connectivity. So our circles and centers, templates for building the new paradigm through new structures, the feminine way. That's the goal of SOAR, uh, to share and grow through the circles and centers using three modalities, the arts, sustainable living principles, and leadership opportunities and leadership support. So let's talk about circles. Right now, women are isolated. They have these spiritual experiences. I heard someone, the family even put them in a, a psychiatry unit when they said they had an alien visitation. <laughs> <laughs> and in the future, that won't be so. But uh, it's, a, it's a place to share our feelings, ideas, and visions in a safe place. Why? Because you're in a resonant circle and these people at your level of development. You can be witnessed and honored as a change agent, have deep support and create new outcomes together. It's no accident that the whole design for the planet is actually the flower of life. Imagine that you and your voice are holding a vortex in one of those circles, but actually it overlaps in someone else's circle. So Sahar is standing in the middle of one of those. I'm standing in one of the middle, but we collaborate and strengthen and support each other, all raising our vibration and connectivity. So my sister's the therapist. She says, Jan, this is great, but people don't know what you mean when you say start a circle. So essentially, you're going to identify women that you like, you resonate with, and you invite them. You can set a get acquainted time with each potential member. Three to nine members is ideal. Set a weekly or monthly time to meet for one hour or so. I recently took two complete strangers who I felt would benefit, and I know they're on the call today, and I might bring them up later if it works. One is driving, but the other one uh, will be able to speak up. And and I put them together and I went on the first Zoom and I laid this out and they have become the fastest uh, friends and support team. And I see that their energy is expanding to invite other people as well. So how to create 
the sewer centers. The template for a powerful meeting is to have a welcome, usually by the leader, then a deep sharing, which is timed, loosely timed, in the group that I have created. I call it the council. If someone just says a little bit, they say, I donate my time to the group because often a person is suffering. We then find the connections everyone shares. We find the connection with that and we drop into a meditation for relief, better outcomes, and more clarity. It is not a therapy, ther it's very therapeutic, but it's not a therapy group. So we keep the focus on being a positive witness growth with respectful boundaries. We don't give advice. We don't need know-it-alls. We just want witness. We don't fix each other. We don't suddenly turn the group into, well, let's all pray for you specifically because you're a mess this week. <laughs> we truly uh, just supportive listening. And guess what? The next week, somebody else is on the hot seat. So it would become a therapy group if we didn't keep those boundaries. During the meditation part, drop into a sacred space, take a breath, whatever you choose. We take turns leading on our meditation to build our leadership ability. We bring our personal and global intentions for good outcomes into the meditation, and we use sound and ritual and breathing to drop into a soul space. I specifically use the Be the Light process that I've used for years. It's a three-step process. All you have to do is email me, and I'll send you a card and also hook you up to a YouTube so you can do it right along with me. It is a very simple, very uh, profound way to drop into that meditative space. So a woman who creates a group has a resonance and a magnetism that attracted other people in that kind of resonate with her the energetic field and intention. So look over on the left that you, you are creating this group. You hold the maypole. Then you attract other women that come in that enhance, but do not try to take your place in the middle in the maypole. Often people, women come in the groups and they're, they feel kind of, oh, gee, I wish I had this group. And they try to be smarty pants and they kind of push the leader off of the platform instead of enhancing and saying, would you like to sit in my center in this moment and teach or lead the meditation? And then you retake your space. It is communication. It is boundaries. It is integrity and respectful. And this is how we create the new paradigm over on the right. The new paradigm is each of us standing in our leadership power, being asked to come and stand in other people's circle, and then holding our own circle powerfully. This is our council one morning and oh gee. And so we have seven and guess what? Sometimes only three come and it's so powerful because spirit has called those things to come that day to share and work through a specific holding pattern that women have carried as an archetype that we heal through us. We are circuit boards, volunteer surrogates for the clearing of long time stuck unaligned energies through the feminine and we are bringing through very high vibrations to clear it out so we're free so we are free and feel safe in that freedom support circles do this and more excellent okay we'll keep the source centers to another event but i'll go ahead and uh share with you now a couple more items about um about creating the circles that i think you'll find interesting okay um i actually have a web page here and i put it over in the chat it is sound and light healing arts uh, dash soar dash soar women's leadership um, initiative 
and I talked about today's gathering. This is about SOAR, which we talked a little bit about there. And there is a, another informational video. And here is the focus, getting in your circle or creating one. You can find others through your friendships, family, social media, and form the meeting times. I watch and see what people post and I feel their resonance and sometimes I'll befriend them or, or if they're already my friends, I'll say, it feels like we have a lot in common. Would you like to do a Zoom? And they usually say yes. So we set a time and then I decide, would I like to interview this person as a sore luminary? Would I like to invite them to my Facebook page or would I like for them to be? And to me, this your inner circle, you must have um, discretion. You really need to, to kind of see if a person has good boundaries, if they talk too much, if they dominate. So give yourself a little bit of time, but it might be in your circle people you really don't even know right now. So you might have to expand and push yourself a little bit to meet new people and see if they are up for a circle with you. Now you can join an existing circle. I mentioned Sahar before. She has a beautiful big community and a lot of women in it. And that's a good place to pick and choose if you're in one of her programs or someone else's program. Then look around and say, who would I like to spend some really sacred, deep, it's an intimate time. Who feels like a match for me? Now, you can meet in person or on Zoom. You can then share meaningful questions and pose answers to each other. I actually have um, written up how to run the actual meeting. There is a template for that too, but essentially what works best. And I've looked at the global sisterhood. I've looked across the board in general, having a check-in. Why a check-in? It brings everybody present to the feeling state, emotions, and how a person is seeing the world. Try to time it so it doesn't go on forever. Um, you can pose a question to kind of keep a theme for the day. And then about a meditation. Then a meditation is nice to lift everybody up and kind of weave together everybody sharing and concerns and um, love and support for themselves and the planet. So the medit uh, these Zoom circles, an hour, uh, I think an hour and a half is usually richer. It can be weekly till you get established and then it could go one month after you're truly bonded. So um, it says, watch the upcoming live sessions on Facebook, which Jan will lead to talk with other circles. Okay, yes, that's a really good initiative and idea. And today is the first day to begin to kick off this conversation of how to get more circles going and overlapping. Now, then if you have created your own circle, you might decide, I really like these women. I like getting together and I'm forming. I am actually good at what I teach. I'm actually good at arts or sustainable living or you're good at something and you think, maybe I would like to invite my group to come in person and spend a day and you could charge the money, then you're supported. You could invite someone else's circle because you are sharing your expertise. Do you see how that works? How one circle has a leader and she's brought together women who wanna learn what she's really good at. And after a while, naturally, they're gonna get good at it. And they're also gonna maybe start their own circle. And in this way, we have exchanges. And then we can create a center in our home as simple as having a circle of women sit in your front room and learn what you're really good at. So that's how things flow 
from the circles into centers. In other words, the physical world, uh, geographically located, a place where people can go and learn from you and they can stay in hotels or maybe stay at your house too if you have a big house. So that's just a little bit more insight into the circles. Okay, so we're gonna stop the share and come back. So I hope you're beginning to see the value of circles and perhaps uh, working on your own life as a circle keeper or circle attendee. And I thought we could just do a little mini uh, workshop here. And so I'm gonna ask my favorite participant today, Margaret. Uh, Margaret, go ahead and unmute yourself, okay? But I'm going to keep you in a small screen because we're going to use this. So, Margaret, have you had a minute to think? Number one, let's ask this. Do you have your own circle yet? Yes or no? No, I don't have a circle that I've started. Would you like to? Yes, I would. Okay, then. Um, let's, let's start from where you're at. We'll get there. Are you in other circles? I'm in a couple of them, several of them, yes. Okay. And you don't even have to say the name, but I, if you're in two circles, do they overlap? Do they have people in, in sameness? Are the same people in, in these circles? Uh, I know two of them. Uh, yours a uh, sore and uh uh sahar okay Sahar's circles so there we are so um so uh say um maybe i should use a different color so this is sahar circle and this is my circle and you are in both you are here see that mm-hmm so what you're learning from her, you are bringing here. And what I say, you are taking and you are taking there. Do you see how we cross pollinate? Yes. Yes, because one idea leads to another. And then you're in that group and you're sharing and you're growing. And then guess what? Every other woman in that group gets a little of this energy from here through you, okay? Yes. And when Sahar says something, it comes here and the women in this group. And, and, then, and then this group says, well, Sahar's really good at community building. Jan has soar and voice release and the be the light. And so this person over here might say, well, how'd you learn about that? Oh, well, I'm in this group with Jan, okay. Now, also, I want to point out something important here. This group that you are in here with me is by invitation. It is a, a small, intimate, what I call the inner circle group. Okay, inner circle. So we have to recognize that different circles have different meaning. I'm not sure. Uh, how deep in intimacy go you go here, or maybe she has you break off into smaller circles. That's a potential Be if there's a lot of people in the program. So Sahar's community, I see women are starting their own Facebook pages. And sometimes I'll join. So guess what? That's another circle of me being in with, with the person who she's inspired to step out for leadership. So this, I mean, she's a mega circle leader in encouraging small circles. And this is my intimate circle. And actually my job is to inspire Sahar and to inspire the leaders and meet them and interview them. So you can see how this galvanizes and forms a lacy-like feminine grid for empowerment of everyone because we're all enthused and excited. Sahar, call Sahar, call Jan, voice release, call Mary for this, for that. So. Now, 
due to the gift of editing, I'm going to add a little bit here. Then, if this is my circle, I can invite Sahar to come over and sit in the center or hold the maypole and share her brilliance with my community. And she has invited me quite often to come over and talk about the voice. And so I am sitting in the circle of her community. We exchange. And Margaret, when she develops her mastery, can come and share as a participant at first, but then sit in the circle when her information is solid and it's needed for the resonance and growth of this group. And then Margaret can go teach in another group, say in France or Australia, who wants that information and mastery. Further, following this concept, what if three women went as a trio and one held the mantle of sustainable living and one held for leadership and the other one brought the arts, music and dance and they went as a trio and visited another large community. Think of the cross-pollination of information and tightening and weaving this new grid. Information is power. What color do you want to be for your own circle? We're going to dream a little bit. Yeah. Um, let's say pink. <laughs> oh, okay. This is a beautiful pink right here. Okay. So your circle, because you're already in these two, you're sitting in this. This is your circle, Margaret, right here. That's your circle. And this is you right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in a perfect world, how many people would you like in your circle? And what kind of circle? Is this going to be a circle where you are teaching and women come together because they resonate with your mastery and want to be there with you? And you're going to give... Uh, other people a chance to step forward? Is it to practice being in circle? Is it a friendship circle? Is it an empowerment circle? This You get to choose. You don't have to choose right this minute. We're just thinking it through. But have you thought about what the purpose, the intention of your circle would be? Yes. Okay. Um, you want me to go? I didn't know how far you wanted me to go. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's what we're doing. We're inspiring other women by you saying, what's your circle going to be, Margaret? Uh, the circle that I have in mind is I, wanna, I want pe women to have a safe container where they can express themselves and what, uh, um, and share them, you know, what, what they need to share, what they want to share. Safe expression. Safe expression. Now, what is going to bring them into your group? Because they resonate with you and they want to come and express themselves well part of that is not just i mean i want that's that's that to me is number one right there the safety of it having that safe container number two is i would like to help women okay begin to know themselves and their spiritual connection with other aspects of life in other words, nature with Gaia. Okay. That they can actually learn. They can actually learn that they can actually connect with them on an intimate level and communicate back and forth and have a relationship. You just claimed your mastery and your right to have a circle. <laughs> you are going to teach women because you have mastery and teach women how to connect with nature. How to connect. All right, tell me more. In what way will you teach them to connect with nature? Uh, for me, what started out was, for me, was the best, was uh, what I call sacred dance. It wasn't any special dance, but it was just putting on music. Okay. Putting, uh, say, and when we started, we just, you could make a mask or I just, 
I used some tree branches because I became a tree my first time. Okay. And I just taped them to uh, blindfolds that I used. Sacred ritual. Sacred, you have ritual. sacred ritual in nature. Wow. Now, you know what we're doing here? We're describing the bullet points of I am creating a circle. In our circle, I will facilitate sacred dancing in nature. You will learn to connect with and resonate with the flow of natural vibrational fields to feel relaxed, to feel more in tune, to feel less stress. Okay. You're claiming your circle right here. How many women would you like in that circle? Um, somewhere between maybe five to nine people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, your first circle, you might get someone here from Sahar's group. You might invite someone from our group as well, uh, or my larger community on Facebook. Watch and see what people post and post your mastery post something exciting like this morning i got up and i danced with the pine cones and i threw them in in a gorgeous pattern and i breathed in and guess what i'm starting a circle maybe you'd like to be part of it so you're going to decide is this a sacred inner circle of really highly awakened highly functioning women or is it going to be where you are a master and you are teaching and you welcome everybody in? So that's the part where you use your discretion and you use your marketing steps appropriately. For instance, I have different Facebook pages for what I believe what people can comfortably read. The Facebook um, SOAR initiative, 450 members, and I feel very free to post anything esoteric about consciousness or vibration, whereas I rarely do on my family and friends 5,000 over here. Why? Because they're not in the inner circle and it doesn't resonate with them. And I see there's no likes, there's no interest. So as you begin to think of these beings it is based on your gift and your resonance. So the way you attract them is to be it, to be this leader and to, and to hold that field of joy for what you want to teach. Okay. I love teaching women releasing the fear in their voice. I just love it. So I, if I wanted to, I could have a voice release circle. But better would be a voice release workshop because it's a one-stop deal. Do you see? Yeah. So you have to really discern and decide, Are these? is this going to be a small group of co-creation of ex experiential working with nature and movement where you're just glad to be together at no cost? Or is it women coming together and you do want some money if you're going to lead every time? Or... If it's a master group, a group of masters, one leads dance, the next week one leads song. So those are the sorts of things. And you don't have to decide that this minute. Those are the sorts of things that spirit kind of brings into place, almost like a painting, the puzzle pieces. And you say, well, where I'm at and what I need and what I want to do right now, that way you're not sending out mixed messages. You're sending out you know, Valentine's love arrows, small intimate circle of other masters where you're sharing versus maybe newbies, newly awakening women, young women, and, and helping them feel free in their bodies and their femininity and their sexuality. So this is a bit of your homework. So you can establish a successful, sustained circle. Thank you very much for being that that person to do that on that chalkboard. And I hope that helped. Now, the other thing is uh, there's timing for everything. And SOAR has had explosive weekend, wonderful, very deep workshops. And then it's had, you know, events, events where uh, 
one or two people showed up. And I know that this is a template that is just available there for people to soak up. And when the juice comes, we have an event. And we had oh, probably over 100 people at a sore event on Facebook this summer. So it's timing. People are fickle. So don't feel bad if your first round, because remember it's resonance and you get, you get better at it. You get better zeroing in. And then again, um, maybe it's a, a little ahead of its time or you need to expand a little bit more and go fishing a little bit wider. And that's why social media is so perfect. And you can speak, you can make a videotape. People hear your resonance, they hear your warmth, your sincerity, they see a picture. We have all of those things to help us because they're all part of the vibrational invitation into your circle. And all you, you've you set the intention, you're gone fishing, and now you just dial in the why, the what, the where, and then the who is by you being that vision and inviting people appropriately to what what you're creating. So is there any questions or anything that came up through that little process? Um, I'm not sure if I exactly if to have a specific question. Um, I think as I go, as things go along and I have more, you know, ideas and things that are coming in, I'm, what I'm seeing is I can already see that, you know, there's probably room for two different groups, although I wasn't thinking of it like that before. Uh, right now, um, I'm not, I wasn't thinking of it as a group, but I just, I had asked you about, uh, uh, mentioned that I was interested in having one or two very close friends who are, are on a similar, who are uh, very close of where we are in our spiritual development and to be able to share. And it's interesting because one came out of your group, the SOAR, which was Michelle. And then I have one that just came out of the, um, was it the SOAR leadership group? I'm trying to remember now. Because <laughs> there's several of them where I've taken class, like these classes type thing that are now self-containers these groups you're taking the proper steps because before you start a big public group isn't it cool to have your own really safe sacred place to be it's like a trampoline yeah. these sacred circles because uh and, and I, I i just i felt uh, very excited uh that you and michelle uh got together and the feedback was really great for that meeting so that's what the sore impetus is it's reach out and be that person who you want to be with. And it, when you're safe and you don't give advice and you listen, um, John Gray, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, said that 10 minutes with a girlfriend who just listens with no fixing anything is better than an hour of therapy with a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> your emotions everything kind of calm down and you're aligned you're you're ready to go so we are winding up it's uh probably yeah a couple more minutes we are winding up uh this little presentation on circles sacred circles i want to say another aspect of the circles is be sure and set your intention for being in a circle or running a circle and always have a sacred moment as you begin. So everybody stops thinking, can breathe and they become absolutely present. And I recommend having a sound structured um, invocation, which is just simple as having a bell and saying, take a deep breath through your nose and out through your mouth. We ask and intend to set the sacred space. We bless this gathering of kindred spirits. We ask we set a sacred space that we feel safe to share and be and communicate, to support each other, to be more expanded, 
happier and joyful and fulfill our mission as a transitional agent for more light on earth. And it can be that simple. And you could take turns too. It's called the invocation or setting sacred space. And I'll tell you why it's important to do at the beginning. It lifts the quality of all the conversation and all the interaction and people's nervous system can come in and they can listen and they can witness and they speak not from this drama trauma thing happened but i am learning this my life journey has brought me this this week and i'm working with it and these this is the picture of how it is and my soul is expanding as a result so that's how we get progress through that support and take more steps towards even more empowerment and well-being it's it, circles are like the glue they're absolutely glue when things are falling apart. And I've found that and I've seen that. So that's why I took this time today to talk about the importance of circles. So the next one we have, we will talk about centers. And then we'll talk about the bigger picture of potential of people identifying themselves through a directory of I'm a master at this and I could go and visit your center and teach it. So there'd be a directory of teachers and a roster of places to go learn from teachers or to teach. And in this way, we're setting up a complete grid of happy campers, of women being empowered and joyful and sharing and traveling and going to fabulous places and eating great food all at the same time. <laughs> so thank you so much uh, for joining me here today. And I'm just thrilled to talk more and bring the vibration of the SOAR initiative. Thank you. I am Jan Thanks. Jorgensen at soundandlighthealingarts.com.